In 2003, Running With Scissors released Postal 2 to a trailer load of controversy, enough so to get the game censored or outright banned in multiple countries, including Australia, Germany, and Malaysia. Despite, and perhaps assisted by the censorship, Postal 2 would urinate directly into the face of adversity and go on to sell millions of copies. The decapitations, the crude racial stereotypes, and Gary Coleman made it a huge hit with edgy teenagers who spoke about it in hushed whispers, and adults like your dad. But before smoking crack for health and the use of cats as silencers became a series staple, Running With Scissors would deliver a far more grim product. The shooting spree began shortly after 7, as about 100 postal employees were sorting their daily mail. In the lead up to the new millennia, there was a string of workplace shootings, multiple of which occurred at US postal offices. Incidents of workplace rage and violence became colloquially known as going postal. Released in 1997, Postal wears this moniker like a badge of honor. It appears to revel in the simple idea of portraying something so extreme, and it boasts about its graphic nature on the back of the game box. It's deliberately offensive and provocative. While shooter games were becoming commonplace for the era, Postal distinguished itself with two defining factors. Human beings as targets, and the necessity to kill. While it's entirely possible to play through games like Doom, and even Postal 2, as a pacifist, where you can end the level without firing a single shot, in Postal 1, it's an outright requirement to progress. The game gives you a number of hostiles to eliminate, and sends you on your merry way with a litany of tools to carry out your task. While you're not required or encouraged to kill people considered non-hostile, they pervade every level are almost indistinguishable from hostiles, and get caught up in the chaos far too easily. The largest contributor to Postal's extremely grim aesthetic, in my opinion, is its sound design. Music is only present during the intro, the level cards, and the credits, and it's not exactly easy listening. From the moment you boot up the game, it's an audio-visual nightmare. The main menu alone assaults the player with a wall of wailing distortion. A faceless character knee-deep in an ocean of skulls, this screaming mouth, and a cacophony of screeching. Even while navigating the menu, each button push is a heartbeat or a scream. Starting the game proper grants another serving of nightmare fuel, with this otherworldly droning. It's unrhythmic and unnerving, and it's not helped by the dated entries that accompany the start of every mission. Velvetic has a great video showing all of the music sampled, which I've linked in the description. One sample in particular, titled Is That The Door, has also been featured in Half-Life 2, Max Payne, and Silent Hill Shattered Memories. With the level intros reading like serial killer poetry, it's easy to see the postal dude as being cut from the same dark like my soul cloth as not important from hatred. My name is not important. But turning to the game's manual serves to shed some light on the postal dude's psyche. Labeled as diary entries, they paint the dude as less of a bloodthirsty edgelord. In the Redux version, these more crazed entries only appear on higher difficulties. He comes across as being on the defensive and honestly confused more than anything. He writes that the people in the town of Paradise are sick and he is under attack by groups of lunatics, even going so far as to try and find the sheriff for help. The entries continue until level 5, where the term diary is replaced with war journal. From start to finish, the entries keep a consistent tone, attempting to remain optimistic and with a workmanlike attitude of sorts. If we dig a little deeper and look at the game's files, there's a distinction that adds more depth to the postal dude's mentality and his actions. Throughout the game, when dude takes damage, his pain responses are voiced by CEO of Running With Scissors, Vince Desi. Oh. However, 
The voice most well associated with Postal Dude is Rick Hunter. Only my weapon understands me. Moreover, in Postal 1, Hunter's voice lines are labelled as Demon. There's a distinction here that Dude is suffering a complete mental breakdown, or more transcendentally, some kind of demonic possession. Either way, it's clear that he isn't fully in control. Look at this image from the manual. To me, this doesn't emanate an aura of victory or bloodlust, but fear. Physically and metaphorically backed into a corner, clasping his weapon and himself. I feel this may be the starkest contrast to the likes of hatred. Not important, and the game itself leans so hard on being brutal, it wraps all the way around again to being comical and turns into a complete farce. Welcome to your nightmare, motherfuckers. It's violent, sure, but with no contrast, it's less impactful. By comparison, where hatred takes itself uber seriously, Postal does have some moments of levity. Many of the game's lines during gameplay are humorous, and certain set pieces feels like the kind of absurd fun we'd see in Postal 2. One look at the final mission's title, and it's easy to see why it came under so much scrutiny. To the collective relief of most everyone, this mission is a cutscene you can't control. The children are safe, and you don't actually commit petticide. Dude attacks, but nothing registers, and then he breaks down and falls to the ground. While the game was released two years prior to the Columbine Massacre, the very idea in its inclusion is extreme, so much so that it was cut from the Redux version of the game in 2016. Producer and designer John Merchant had the following to say regarding Redux's new ending. The whole idea of the original ending no longer applies anyway. It was supposed to depict something that, at the time, would have been completely unthinkable and out of touch with reality. Tragically, the sad truth is that, in today's world, it is no longer an unthinkable nightmare, but a very depressing reality. And here's where it all ends. The rampage grinds to a halt, with one of the most hellish endings in video game history. Postal Dude is condemned. No triumph. No sense of victory. Just a clinical explanation. The ending evokes this uneasy, empty feeling. Perhaps the demon attached to the protagonist, if you could even call it that, is an allegory. A metaphor for the player. The real driving force behind all of the chaos. You're responsible for where the Postal Dude has ended up but you don't have to take any of the punishment. It's very clear that Postal 1 is the darkest entry in the series, and certainly a contender for one of the darkest video games ever made. If you've played Postal 1, give me your thoughts down in the comments. And if you haven't, it's free on Steam. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do so at the Patreon link below. And I'd like to thank my current patrons for subscribing.